welcome back to Design Bundles YouTube channel. If you guys are new here, my name is Crystal. Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make this super cute gnome for St. Patrick's Day. So we're gonna make this door hanger. Now, I'm gonna take you guys over to designbundles.net as well as the Glowforge software to show you guys all the way from cutting this out to painting it. So as you guys can see, it is super duper adorable. I love the way that this came out and you could paint it whatever colors you would like. We have lots of gnomes on Design Bundles, so definitely check them out. So let's go ahead and dive right in. For today's project, I am using Baltic Birch. So if you guys purchase these um, pieces of wood that are not from Glowforge, you guys know that they don't have a mask on them. Now you guys can save a ton of money by buying um, wood other than Glowforge brand, but it doesn't have the QR code to help it with those settings and it's not going to be masked. But I'm gonna show you how to mask it. So this masking tape right here is actually just transfer. This is paper transfer tape that I'm using today. This is actually from Expressions Vinyl and this is their six, um, six inch roll, but you can get them in 12 inch rolls. So for the six inch rolls, now if I was only doing a small little see I was kept cutting some keychains and I was actually only working in, the, in this area I only have to mask that I don't have to mask the whole thing but if I want to prep the whole thing that was just ready for future use I could do so so with these six inch rolls here you can simply roll all the way down so I'm working as you guys notice as I'm going down I'm kind of smoothing everything out so you just want to kind of rub everything out you don't have to do anything crazy just enough to get it to bond and then we're going to trim to trim this off, I'm just gonna use my knife blade so I could actually kind of bring this out here and I'm just gonna take a knife blade here, being very careful not to get on my countertop, just like so. There we have it. And then we can go ahead and trim off the excess on this side and we can actually just use a pair of scissors, honestly. So you can just kind of come through here. It doesn't even have to be perfect um, on your little ends here, honestly. So something about like that looks good to me. So now let's go ahead and get the other side. So for this side here, since we're using that six inches, we're gonna go ahead and go right back on top here. So I'm gonna go ahead and you just wanna make sure everything is covered. So I'm just gonna roll myself down here once again, slowly smoothing everything out. So I've kinda got it stretched out and then I'm just gonna smooth it out. So easy to mask these things, guys. So I wanted to show you this today because I don't want you to be scared that you you can't purchase outside of um, the Glowforge brand, if you will. So it's super duper easy to mask it, and that's it, so easy. And I wanna say these rolls like this are $9, and usually you can use a promo code um, and save um, even, even more money as well. So um, like I said, these run around $9 or so. Um, and then stay tuned. I think the 12 inch ones obviously are 20 because they're double. Um, so you would have 20 in those, but they're 100, I think they're 100, is it 100 inches or 100 feet? I think it's 100 feet. So as you guys can see there, so Expressions Vinyl, paper transfer tape, and I'll have this link down below for you guys. So you can purchase these either in the six or the 12. Now you only need to mask the one side unless you plan on looking at both sides. So say for example, I was doing a keychain, and I'm utilizing both sides of the design. I would want to mask both sides because you want those burn marks, you don't want them on there. So I would mask both sides. Now, if I was doing, um, I was just gluing this onto something. So say for example, this project here is for um, a door hanger. You're only gonna see the front. Or if I was applying, say it was a heart and I was gluing it onto something, you can't see the backside, then just mask the front. So that's the other tip there. So let's go ahead and continue our project. Now that we have our wood masked, I want to place this with the mask side up inside of our Glowforge. So I'm just placing this right on top of our um, honeycomb, if you will. So once we shut this, this little camera right here is going to um, take a picture. So that way when we go to design it, we can place our design perfectly on this wood where we want it to be. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this and let's head on over to Glowforge so we can get ready to cut it out. Starting off over on designbundles.net, this is the super cute file that we are using today. If you guys are a Plus member, this is only one Plus credit. Now, lots of different things that you could do with this little guy. For example, as you guys can see here, you could turn it into a gift tag or maybe you're decorating a Christmas tree. You know, a lot of people um, use the trees all year round for different holidays like Easter, lots of different things. So a few things that you could actually do with it, what I'm gonna do with it today, this file actually comes with 
with two, one with a hole on the top and one without. So for example, if I wanted to make this um, big enough to apply to, say for example, I was doing a wood round door hanger, I could actually make this big enough to apply maybe over to the left or right hand bottom corner. Um, but today I'm actually going to bring this guy as big as I can to create a door hanger with this. And then we're gonna be able to paint it. So let's go ahead and get ready to download it. So for downloading this, since it's a one plus credit, you simply just have to hit download and then it's going to pop straight into your downloads on your computer. So then you can take this over to whatever software that you're using. Today, we're actually using Glowforge. Now today, I'm actually gonna show you guys some tips and tricks um, whenever you're using Glowforge with using Designscape. If you guys are a Gold Plus member, you guys have access to Cricut Designscape. So we're gonna utilize that today. So I'm gonna show you how you can use that program so that way you can rotate your designs and things like that. So if you guys are a Glowforge user, you know that you have to pay a monthly fee um, or yearly to have access to even rotate a design, which is super silly. So I'm gonna show you guys a way around that by using Designscape. So here's our file, I've already brought it inside. Number one, as you guys can see, it brought in our wood. You can see that it's masked here, so I know exactly where we're gonna be able to cut. And then I've brought in my SVG. You can simply bring that in by clicking on this plus right here and importing your artwork. Now, like I said, this file actually has two. It comes with one with a hole in it right here and one without. So depending on whichever one you're wanting to use. So for today, I'm actually going to be using, I'm trying to decide if I want the one with a hole so I can apply um, my little piece of wire, which is what I'm thinking, but you could also apply it through the back. So I, I think I'm gonna use the guy on the left. We're gonna get rid of the one on the, with the hole. To do that, you're simply just going to um, click on these. So if you click off to the right somewhere, I could click on this guy or this guy. We're gonna click on the one on the right and hit delete from our keyboard, super easy. Now, if I was going to use it, like Glowforge is going to allow me to use it, I'm not gonna be allowed to rotate it unless I'm a member. So I would only be able to stretch this out. I can grab a corner and I can actually size this guy out as big as I can in this direction. But I actually wanna make it bigger than this. So I actually wanna rotate it so we can make it much bigger. So once again, I can't do that unless I'm subscribed. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that with Designscape. So heading back over to Design Bundles, if you guys are a Gold Plus member, once again, you have access to Designscape for free. So you're simply going to click on it here. We're gonna click on Go to Designscape, and then from here, I can import it and rotate it and bring it back out. So super easy. Let's go ahead and hit on File. So I'm gonna hit File and then Open. And then as you guys can see my files right here, I'm gonna bring in my SVG version. So I'm gonna click on it and click on upload. From here, I'm just going to go ahead and rotate. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this guy because I'm not bringing it in. If you were bringing this one in, go ahead and keep it. If you were gonna keep both, um, or you can just get rid of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this layer here, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and do this. So now I have these two pieces here, and all I simply have to do is I'm going to select both layers by simply dragging over them like this, or you can simply grab them over here by holding down the shift and clicking on both of my layers. So I've got my layers selected here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on image, and then we're gonna come down to where it says transform. From here, I can rotate it 90 degrees just like so. Now remember, I have both of these pieces selected, so it's very important to make sure that both layers are selected. Now with both layers selected still, I'm gonna go ahead and click on um, SVG. Then from here, I can double click on it. I can see my design here, and there is my file. So you wanna make sure both layers are selected, like I said, and now we can bring this guy right inside of Glowforge. So let's go back to Glowforge. Let's get rid of this guy. We're gonna click on that plus, and then I'm gonna click on upload. So from here, I'm gonna to go to recent, and you can see our rotated guy right here. I'm gonna click on upload, and now, as you guys are gonna see, it's loading right now, it's going to be rotated. So super duper easy. I have both layers still. It was very fast to be able to do this, guys. Super duper easy. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to drag it out right here, and as you can see, I can make it so much bigger in this direction. So don't feel limited without subscribing to Glowforge. You could definitely use your Designscape along with Glowforge to achieve so much more. 
So now that we have our design in here, we have it sized out. To see my size, I can simply, while it's selected, I can click on this ruler down here and I can see my size right here. So it is 14.53 wide, which is actually going to be my height. And then it is 10.39 um, wide. It's saying height, but that's because of the way that our wood is in there. So that is our dimensions right here. So once you're happy with it, you're able to proceed forward. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to set these up. Okay, so my top layer here, I'm going to click on it. I'm going to change it to cut because that is my cut file. And then my bottom layer here is engraved. Now the other important thing you wanna do is switch these layers. You always wanna cut last, so I'm gonna grab it and just hold on to it and drag it below. So now I've swapped those. You always wanna engrave first, cut last. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our materials. I'm gonna click on un unknown. Now, depending on where you purchase your materials, so for example, I purchased mine from Smoky Hills, you could go to this right here, it says Baltic Birch, this is the exact one I got. If you scroll down, they have recommended settings. So if you go to the Baltic Birch, it says to use medium basswood plywood for cut, and it says for engraved to use the exact same one. So um, wherever you purchase your from, you Wherever you purchase your wood from, um, if it's outside of Glowforge, you can always ask your um, supplier what the recommended settings are. All right, so let's go ahead and head back to Glowforge, and we are going to choose that medium basswood plywood. So I'm going to go ahead and choose medium. Which is right here. And so now we have medium basswood plywood chosen. We have engraved, we have cut, everything is ready to go. Um, I may actually, just to be safe, I'm actually going to click on this guy. I'm going to size it back down just a smidge, just to make sure I'm staying within my lines right here. So I think everything else looks really, really good. I'm ready to go. As you guys can see, I just shifted this over a little bit. So if your lines are both still red, um, the Glowforge wasn't reading it. I just grabbed it and shifted it over just a bit. I bet it was outside of my lines of where I could cut. So just shifted it over um, towards the right a little bit. Once you have this blue line and red line like this, you're ready to go. So now we can go ahead and hit print. And so it's going to start preparing to print. From here, it's gonna tell us, you can hear my machine in the background. From here, it's going to tell us exactly how long this cut is going to take. So give it just a second. All right, so as you guys can see, this project is going to take three hours and 15 minutes. It is a bigger cut, and I think because we are doing, um, you know, like a bigger engrave, so you could definitely come over here and play around with whether you just want to do a draft graphic or SD or HD, but I'm going to go ahead and keep it at the, um, at the SD, if you will. So we're going to go ahead and proceed forward, and then we will kind of pop in and out showing the cuts. So I'm going to go ahead and head on over to my Glowforge and hit go. Now that we have cut this little guy out, we can remove this piece right here and simply pick this guy right out of here. Check this guy out. How super cute is this? Now, keep in mind that you did not have to do, this was three hours, a little over three hours long, but you don't have to go this long. As you guys can see how deep this went in, you can change your settings. I just went by the recommendation, but you could definitely lighten those up, which we will get into tutorials um, during this year. So we're going to get into a lot of these details of how we could cut this time way, way lower. So we could have even been less than an hour by doing a fine etch instead of such a deep one. So I'm going to try to bring this up so hopefully you guys can see how deep those etch lines are but how super cute is this guy and he's quite large so let's take this back over to the craft table so we can paint him up all right and here he is look at how large this is such a great cutout this is going to be a perfect door hanger you guys can see how thick this is super nice i'm going to bring it up so hopefully you guys can see how deep this etch is so once again you could cut this down probably to even like 20 minutes or so um, just if you did a real fine etch and maybe even lower. But once again, we're going to get into all of those details in future videos. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that. So once you have your little cutout here, just like so, what we need to do is remove our mask. All right, so I've got a little weeding tool here. I'm ready to remove this. As you can see, a few little pieces popped up on me and that's okay. So we're just going to go through here. A lot of this you can uh, peel by hand. So if it's starting to peel up, you can just kind of peel it. If not, just kind of get your weeding tool here. 
So what this mask does, if you guys are new to, um, you know, laser machines, you guys can see how it keeps your, um, your wood clean. So all of these like burn marks right here, like we're from the, the air kind of blowing it on there. Um, this is not going to be on your wood. So whenever we remove this mask, you guys can see how clean that wood is underneath. So it's just going to protect our wood. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and continue to remove all of these. So you guys can see how easy it was to still use wood other than Glowforge. And once again, it's super duper affordable. I think this piece of wood was around $4 where something like this may have costed you $10 over on Glowforge. So I'm gonna go ahead and just continue to pull all of these pieces off. Now I've already got a variety of paint lined up here. What I highly recommend is chalk paint. I love chalk paint, but some of my chalk paint is at my other studio and then some of it's here. So I'm gonna use a mixture between chalk paint and um, acrylic paint so feel free to use whatever you have on hand and you know to pick up acrylic paint too from you know the craft store or you know your local store or anything like that they're usually around a dollar a piece so super duper affordable all right so i'm going to go ahead and just make sure you're getting all of your pieces as you guys can see there's even like those little thin intricate outline outlines. Now for me, I am obsessed. So if it was for myself, I wasn't selling something like this. I wouldn't mind the three hour project because I really love how deep this is in the wood. But if I was going to sell this, I would obviously want to cut down my time because it would be obviously very time consuming. So I definitely want to cut back how deep that etch is. So that's what's going to get you. It's not going to be your cut. That cut, as you guys can see, probably took about a minute. So the last remaining minute was our cut, maybe a little bit, maybe a minute and a half. So it was no time to cut. It was definitely how deep that edge was. So as you guys can see here, this is, I think I've got everything removed. So where my paper started to peel, I got a few little burn marks there on my wood, but I'm okay with it because we're going to paint over it anyways. So love, love, love this guy. How super cute is this going to be to paint? Now, like I was saying, this is quite large. So I'm actually gonna have like, I'm going to attach a little piece of wire on the back of here, but you could definitely attach these to wood rounds and all sorts of different things. So I'm also going to show you guys, I found these, before I get started, I found these at Hobby Lobby. They were $6 and they're 40% off. So the spring, Anything that is a spring shop is always 40% off, as you guys know. So what I was thinking is we could cut this off, you know, make sure this is glued, have this as a nose on it. We have tons of gnomes here on Design Bundles, and we could definitely attach that or use the hair in some sort of way for his beard. I really like this one. They also have this one with the three little balls. I would untie this, remove the two small ones, and keep the little chunky one and that could go really cute too and then i could fan this out on his beard as well so tons of different options so if you guys see these locally at your hobby lobby definitely snag them lots of different projects we could do with those so let's go ahead and get ready to paint so once again i've got a variety here so i'm going to start out with painting let's start off with his hat and kind of work down a little bit so i'm going to have a darker green here i'm going to have a lighter green um, I think his little outfit's going to be a little bit uh, lighter. I'm going to have green, um, sh I mean, black shoes, of course. Um, this piece is going to be black. And then I'm going to do the buckles in gold. So I have this really pretty gold here. Um, these can be found locally. I'll try to list what I have down below. Maybe not specifically, but I've got some greens, um, basically some greens. I've got some neutral tones as well as some pinks for his nose and stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and dive in. Like I said, I think I'm trying to decide because I really want to go straight for his beard and then work my way around. I think I'm going to do it. I'm just going to do it. So I don't have my white chalk paint with me today. So I'm actually going to use this one right here, just an acrylic. And I'm just going to go ahead and get this down here since this is going to be a majority of my beard. And I'm actually going to add just a little bit of this gray chalk paint here. So I'm going to add in just a little bit to tone that white down just a little bit. So I'm going to kind of smooth this out just like this. So you guys can see that color there. So I just mix a little bit of gray with that white. And this is going to help that white not be so thick either. So 
go ahead and get in here, kind of knock some of that off, and we're gonna start right here. Now, some of these areas, I'll probably speed up a little bit while I'm not talking, and then I'll slow back down when I'm talking about another area. So I'm gonna start out, like I said, with this beard right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get right in here. Now, I have not decided yet, get a little bit more of that off here, I got way too much on my brush. I have not decided yet if I want to go into these um, burnt places here, into my etching, engraving if you will i don't know if i want to go in with a black when i'm done i'm just not too sure i think that's what i'm going to do is i'm probably going to outline right in that groove with black so i don't have to be too too cautious about where i'm going and i may actually have to go down to a little bit of a smaller brush with this here so we'll see so i'm just going to kind of go right here so what you can do is you can either a follow the colors of the one that was for this image right there on design bundles i always love the colors they give us for an example or what i did is i like to just google i just google gnomes so i'll, I'll google a gnome door hanger and then you can type in st patrick's day or whatever you want to do or just simply a gnome so you can follow along what other people have done so that way you can see where the highlights and things like that now obviously it may not be the same gnome but you can still get inspiration from those colors. So I was really hoping today this may help inspire you. Whether you guys are making a gnome um, and you guys are watching this at Christmas time and you're gonna be making one of our Christmas gnomes or 4th of July or Easter, whatever it may be, it would be the same exact concept. Now keep in mind, any of our files that are um, SVG files and PNGs, you guys can turn these into laser cuts. So even though it's not labeled as a laser cut, you guys can still customize and turn these into um, laser cuts, which we'll be getting into and I'll show you more of that too very soon. So like I said, stay tuned this year. We are really going to dive into the Glowforge. That is the machine that we chose um, to get. I think a lot of you guys have that one. So that's what we wanted to do is make sure and work with one that you guys, most of you guys had. Now I know a lot of things, it may not be the same program, but it's the same concept of bringing it in sizing them up and stuff like that. So I hope you guys are gonna enjoy the design scape as well. That's really going to help you Glowforge users as well to be able to, if you're already a Plus member, take advantage of that so that way you guys can save some cash and just use that design scape to rotate and things like that. You can also use the fonts um, to customize your very own text and all that stuff and bring it in as well. So I'm just gonna go ahead and Keep going here. Now I will, obviously I'm gonna paint everything first and then I will do all of my um, highlighting and all that kind of stuff at the very end. So I'm just getting down all of my little base colors here. And once again, at the very, very end, I'll come back and outline everything with the black. So I absolutely love this little guy, so cute. So as you guys can see, I mean, what this was designed for was, you know, like a little tag or an ornament. But you don't have to, you know, just use them for those things. You guys can use these for whatever you would like. Now, I wish I could think of what it's called whenever you make those cute little, you guys sound down below, let me know, um, those cute little three-tier layers so for, for your little, like, coffee bar and stuff. You guys know what I'm talking about. This guy would be adorable on there as well. All right. So I think I've got my base gray going on here for the beard. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to another color here. So I think I may move on into, um, I may even get his little nose really quick. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is I will start off with, I'm gonna start off with this one right here. This is linen white. By the way, these are from Starcraft, in case you guys are wondering, the chalk paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into this linen first and then I'll add in some of that pink later. So I'm just going to go right in here and just go ahead and get that nose really quick. There we go, get our base color. There we go. So next, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with his little hands here, just to get that base color going so it can start drying down for us. And then we'll add in some of those pink tones here in a bit. Okay, so let's see, let's go ahead. Now I'm gonna come in with those greens, like I said. I'm gonna go ahead and get his outfit really quick. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and come up here and work. So I think 
What color I'm gonna come in there with is, I think I'm gonna come in, I'm trying to decide here really quickly. I think we're gonna do, because it's gonna be darker, lighter, and I do believe, because we're gonna have darker. So I think I'll come in with this color of green right here. This one right here is from Delta and it is leaf green. So I'll try to bring these up as well so you guys can see the colors that I'm using in between. So there's that one we have. So that way you guys can screenshot as well. But once again, these are all going to be linked down below. The white I'm using is right here so far, right? And then my gray, I need to cover this guy back up. All right, so there we go. I'm using the gray by Starcraft as well. Okay, so now I'm gonna get me another brush here and I'm gonna come in with that green here and get all these. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move into this darker green really quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch out my brushes again, just in case I have to come back. Actually, I think we're okay. I'm gonna stick with this same brush. I'm gonna come into this darker green here. This is Smoky Jade. So I'm gonna use this one here. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and start up here really quick. And I may actually come in with a little bit of, um, this metallic here in just a second for this hat. So we'll see. I'm trying to determine. I thought this was gonna be a little bit of a deeper green. So I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of paint the whole thing through and then kind of see where I wanna go with it. So just kind of scrolling through here really quickly. And I actually think I'm starting to like this green. So we're just going to deal with it for now. But I did keep out, like I said, I have this metallic green and I was trying to decide if I wanted to use it or not. So we'll see if we add any of it in here. But I am going in with that gold, so I'm thinking that may be too much. Now you could also come in with like, um, you know, a glue like Mod Podge and put glitter on these as well would be super cute. And I'm also gonna go ahead and get the patches on his arms here as well with the same green. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and come back in really quick with another green for the, the clover here. So I've got this green, which is paraque parakeet green, if you will. So you guys are starting to see as we're adding color here, it's starting to come to life. Now we're all of, it's really gonna come to life whenever we do all of the um, shadows and all that little highlights, if you will. Um, that's where it's really gonna start to come to life, if you will. So I've got those pieces and I'm gonna come back in because we have black, black, black here. And then we have the little gold pieces. So we're gonna do that. And then, like I said, I'm gonna come in and really start to smooth everything in. And I'm trying to decide because I, I'm going to outline this, like I said, with a black at the very end to go back into the groups. So I'm probably going to come back with um, one of these greens, maybe. We'll see to that very edge before I outline. So we're gonna figure that out here in just a bit. So loving this green, super, super cute. And um, I'm gonna probably, which I'm gonna highlight and all that stuff here in a minute. So I'm actually gonna leave it. All right, so get this out of our way. Let's go ahead and come in now for our black pieces. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my black, which I'm actually gonna come in with this Starcraft chalk paint in black. Now remember with these chalk paints too, you could also mix colors here and you could you know change colors up. So you could take a couple of colors, like I could have took their green that they have and mixed it with the black and made like different tones of green as well. Um, so that's something to do as well. With If you just have a couple paints, you can always change the colors by adding white or black to lighten them or darken them. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm actually gonna start up here here, which these are going to be outlined. So I may, at the end of the day, I may add a little bit of, um, I need something that, that may need to break these up since I'm going to outline the whole thing with black. So we'll figure that out here in a second. I may actually come in and lighten this up and almost make it like a lighter black, if you will. 
I just absolutely love this. It's so, so cute. I love the way it's coming out. Now, once again, I really love chalk paints. Um, there's tons of different brands out there, so definitely highly recommend chalk paints. I love how light they are, and they dry super, super fast. So if you're making a bunch of these, I would definitely recommend um, some chalk paint because it's going to help speed up the process. So if this is going to be something you're going to make and sell, um, it'll definitely speed that process up for you. All right, so we've got that. I'm gonna come in with that gold really quick and then I'm gonna come back and kind of figure out how I'm gonna lighten up these, um, this black really quick. So I could also outline everything in white as well. That's another option, um, but I don't think so. I'm trying to decide. Maybe, no, I'm gonna outline it in black. So we'll figure that out in a second. Let's go ahead and come in with that gold really quick. I'm gonna use this smaller little brush. I absolutely love this gold. It's gorgeous. So I'm gonna go ahead and get going with this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with this one up here. So but yeah, this gold right here is absolutely gorgeous. And you may want to, so say for example, like how this one got, um, I got some other colors on it as well as, um, you know, got burnt a little bit where my, my paper lifted. I could always paint it white first and then go over it or paint it with a brown or for example, like the linen, if you will, because of the gold. Um, and that's just going to intensify the color of this gold as well. So that's another little tip and it's going to cover up any of that paint because this is kind of a little bit more on the sheer side. So it's gonna cover up any little mistakes or anything like that that may have been made from, you know, the paint that, you know, touched it from another color. Like for example, I got green on there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get my buckle here. I, like I said, I love this gold. It is so, so pretty. I'm just gonna go ahead and get these little pieces here. There we go. And then one more. Now I could go back and I can deepen these here in a little bit if I need to add some more. There we go. Cute for now. There we go. So this is our basic, right? So this is just our basic look here. So now what I can do is I'm gonna come back through here really quick and I am going to kind of clean up all of my brushes really fast because I'm gonna come back in and add all of those little um, pieces and stuff. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with a little bit of this linen. So I'm actually gonna scoop some out here so I'm not dipping in here. So I'm gonna start off with coming in with a little bit of this linen, like I said. So I'm just gonna start creating some hairs here. So I'm just creating some little faux lines just to add some little bit of dimension. So it's almost kind of like a little bit of a dry brush, if you will. It doesn't have a whole lot of paint on it. And I'm just starting to come in with a little bit of those lines. You could do as thick or as little as you want to. And this is just gonna really help, like I said, to give some dimension. So I'm gonna come in with the linen first and then I'll probably come in with a little bit of some browns and possibly some whites. So I'll speed this process up really quickly. I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just coming in with a couple different colors here to, um, to like I said, to pop it out. Okay, so I'm really loving the way that this is coming out so far, but I think I'm gonna come in, this is like a terracotta color, so this could be a mistake or not. It is toasted terracotta like this, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and try to come in with a real um, soft hand, and I think I'm gonna come in with this smaller one here because I just wanna put in ever so lightly, so I'm just gonna go ahead and try to almost go in with a dry brush, so I kinda get my brush strokes going here a little bit. And then I'm just gonna try to get a few of those in here. So I'm just gonna give it appearance of a little bit of red hairs. And I can always come back in too and kind of smooth those out a little bit. Come back in with a little bit of that linen just to kind of blend that out just a little bit. Now I am no artist, okay? This is just me of what I kind of do whenever I'm working on a project like this. Once again, I'll kind of, um, I could Google an image as well, just to kind of give myself a little bit of inspiration, like I said. So um, feel free to, you know, do exactly as I'm doing here. Or if you guys, you know, obviously know more than what I'm doing with these lines, then definitely feel free um, to do however you would normally do so. 
All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that for now. Now, this colors will kind of go down just a little bit because where I came in with a little bit of that linen, I'm just gonna kind of smooth that out a little bit. And then I can also even come back in with almost a dry brush with that gray, just to kind of smooth that out a little bit. All right, so I think that looks good. I'm really liking the way, I'm just gonna smooth some of these harsh lines out here a little bit. Once again, coming in with maybe even like that gray, a dry brush and going over it just like almost one more time just to kind of smooth um, any of those little lines out, just like I said. All right, so I think I'm happy with his beard. I think it's coming to life. I think it's looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do now is I think I'm going to get ready to come back in. Maybe I'm trying to decide if I wanna come in, for example, on, on this right here with a little bit of a dry brush to bring in some of this green on his clothes, like the darker green that we used on the hat. So I think that's what I'm gonna kind of do here, just kinda, of, once again, going in with a dry brush, just to bring in some of that um, color here and there. Now you could definitely just stick with um, painting this or just continue to add some more to add a little bit of depth. See how that's just kind of adding a little bit of, of depth to it? Now, same thing, I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit of that under his um, brim of his hat because we're, we should have some, a little bit of shadowing going on down here. Something about like that. So I think what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of that pink into his hands. So let me do that now. Get some on there like so. And then do the same thing with his hands some of that off just kind of doing almost like a dry brush like I said just kind of blending the two colors together super cute and then I am going to I think at this point I'm going to try to tone down um, the black like I said on his feet and stuff just because now um, it's going to be a little bit crazy because I am going to outline it with that black and I don't want those to um, fade together if you will so I'm going to go ahead and come in with a little bit of this gray on top, almost like a dry brush, kinda. I'm gonna see about doing that real quick just to see what that does. So I'm just bringing in, so I put um, black down, I put a little bit of gray, but you could also just mix it right away and made almost like a, I think it would be like a charcoal color, if you will. So I'm just bringing that down, kind of. And if you notice too, it's almost making it a little bit more rustic, if you will, a little bit more, um, like their older shoes, if that if that makes if that makes sense at all. See what I mean? It almost just kind of makes that black look a little bit more um, washed out, like it's an older shoe. There we go. Then that also just kind of adds dimension as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and come in back up here at the top and finish these guys. I think that is going to do it on those pieces there. Okay, so it should be able to come back in, and that should give me a little bit of separation when we outline everything. So. Let's get ready to outline everything. I think for the outline, I'm gonna come in with this little thin brush here. I definitely love the way that his beard has came out. So you guys sound down below. Let me know what you think, if you guys like this, or um, if you think his beard was too much. All right, so we're getting ready to go. I'm gonna come back in with this black here. And so once again, I've just got a real thin paintbrush for this one. I'm gonna be so careful. And I'm just kind of dipping into my lid here. And then I'm just going to start to outline everything. So I'm just gonna let this kind of go down in there. All right, so as you guys can see, this is what I have so far. Look at how super cute this is. So feel free to, you know, paint as little or as much as you want to. I mean, you can literally just come in here and paint these green and white or brown or whatever you want to for your colors, or you can add in some more dimension like I did by adding in some, you know, darker tones and stuff like that here and there. So feel free to paint these up or down as much as you want to. So for my final little things here is I'm gonna do a little highlight here and there with some white. So this is my super cute guy so far. And what I did, just to explain really quickly, Whenever I went around with the black, I took my time. So I'd go around this area with the black, I would stop. I would take, for example, this green right here, and then I would 
dip more into that color green and blend those out. So you would get a little bit of that black from that outline and it would draw that in. Same thing with this beard. You can see all this color that came in here. It's from that black outline and I would come back in with my beard color and then um, kind of blend those out if you will. So that's what happened there. And then with my top here, I added a little bit of white in the middle here and then blended it out with that same color green and then I added a little bit of black to that same color green and came around the sides just to give it a little bit more dimension. I could have also done that here on the hat but I think I'm done playing around with that. I just want to add a little bit of highlight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my real fine brush like so, ignore my paint hands here and then we are going to dip into that white here and then here and there I'm just going to add in a few different little lines so something about like this. So it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. So I could do kind of like a dot, dot, dash, something about like that if I want to. Um, this is just going to make it pop even more. So once again, this is extra. You definitely don't have to do this. I'm really just trying to give you guys a little bit of inspiration. So I'll do a little bit here on his elbows and then a little bit on the tips of his feet here. And then I'll probably do a little bit here at the base. Once again, definitely does not have to be perfect. Now, like I was saying, this actually would be so cute if you added this, um, we could make it even smaller and just kind of add it to a round um, door hanger as well. But I'm going to add a wire here in just a little bit. So I'm just going to, I think I will do something about like this as well. I think I'm also going to get a little one on the tip of, or the top of his nose, if you will. And for the colors of his nose, that is a color of the linen, the pink, and then that little bit of that terracotta with the black and stuff. I just kept playing around with it until I got it where I wanted it. So I think I'll do the same thing with the hands. I'm going to get a little bit here and uh, there like so. And then maybe we will do the same thing like a little dot dot dash right in here just to kind of give it a little extra and then I was trying to decide if I wanted to go into his beard or not I think I'm also going to right here inside I'm going to go in with a little bit of a dry brush by the way I got a new canvas because mine was covered in paint so just for you guys I kind of did that so it didn't look like too much of a hot mess I'm actually going to kind of go in here just like so with almost like a dry brush with just a little bit of paint on it with these um because i didn't really add any sort of dimension to um these ones right here so i'm just kind of going in like this like i said with a dry brush and i may come back in and blend that out with that lime green i believe that was parakeet so i'm just kind of getting a little bit of white in there just like that and then i'm actually going to dip back into that real like lime green, if you will, and then I'll kind of smush those out just to kind of get a little bit of a highlight underneath those sections. And I think I'm happy with this. I'm going to quit playing with it because if I keep on going, I'm going to keep around this and around until I'm not happy with it. So absolutely gorgeous. I love how this came out. Now mine is a little bit more on the um, grungy side, if you will. I really love how his beard came out, but maybe you want yours to be super bright and vibrant and that is totally okay. So feel free to pick out your paint palette of whatever you guys would like. And as you guys can see that gold hopefully kind of come through there. Super, super gorgeous. So I'm gonna let this dry for just a second and then we are going to come back and we are going to add our wire. Now, my husband is an electrician, so we have lots of different little bits of wire laying around, but you could use like floral wire, a wire hanger, whatever you would like. And what I did to um, create these here, I think it's so cute when you get those, um, those hangers and they have those little curls in them. So all I simply did was I had my finger inside here like so. I'm actually going to come down a little bit just so I can show you guys, let's see. So just kind of had my finger here and just kind of curled around like this. So I just kept going until I had however many that I wanted to. So I'm actually going to um, undo this because whenever I get done, I'm actually gonna have my husband kind of 
trim some of this off for now. You guys are going to see the excess in this video, so that's okay. But I'm actually going to have my husband actually come back and trim this with his little wire cutters. But once again, lots of different wire out there. You could use uh, string, twine, um, some jute string would be super cute. Now remember, there is two options whenever it comes to this gnome. There's one that has a hole in it, um, and then obviously this one that did not. So you could leave the one with a hole, and you can string up ribbon through that as well. So while this is drawing down, let's go ahead. I'm going to show you guys another bow. So I've showed you guys a super easy DIY bow with a zip tie and a ribbon. So I'm going to scoot this guy out of the way just so while that's drawing one last time, we can go ahead and get this bow together. What you're going to need for this bow, we're doing like a double bow. So this is a four ribbon bow, four loop bow. So what we're going to do is I've already cut down a piece here and we are going to do just like I've taught you guys before and we are going to create that awareness ribbon so one side of this you see how i've got this awareness ribbon and i may want to play with it back and forth until i get the loop size i want so this is one side of my awareness ribbon i'm going to lay this down and i'm actually going to loop this side so i want to do the same thing on this side so i have two of them you see that so it's almost like an infinity symbol all right so what I'm gonna be able to do here, like I've showed you guys before, let me actually kind of bring this in just a little bit, is I'm actually going to be able to scrunch these guys together like so, all right? And then we are going to grab that zip tie. So easy, play around with these until you're happy with it. Um, you know, feel free to get as close or as far away as you want. So before we kind of really get close in with that awareness ribbon, but with this one here, um, feel free to, you know, do as little or as much as you want kind of, you're just creating these four little um, loops here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just going to start playing with it. So before I completely tighten this, so I have it somewhat on there, but I don't have it tight. As you can see, I can move this around. So what we can do is I can pull these guys out until I'm happy with them. So I've got four little loops here that I can play around with. All right, so just kind of play around with it until you're happy with it. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim off this tail like so, just like that, right? So I've got two little ends there. So once I'm happy with this, I'm gonna go ahead and pull nice and tight and I'm going to trim off that end. So now I can kind of really fluff these guys out and hopefully that made sense for you guys. But look at how cute this ribbon is. So easy, right? So zip tie and ribbon. I'm gonna bring this guy back in. All right, so let's get ready to attach our wire to the back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna flip this guy over and then I am going to, so see without adding that extra layer of the masking tape on the back, you can see we got this. If we would have put masking on the back, you wouldn't have this, but to me, we're not gonna look at the back, so I am not concerned. So I'm gonna do mine about right here. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take this, so whether you are using floral wire or whatever you're using, you can do the same method. So I'm actually gonna take my staple gun here and I'm gonna get it right in the center and staple and staple, there we go. So like I said, I'm gonna get my husband here in a little bit to trim this off. And then you are going to have this. How adorable is this? So we can kind of smash this down a little bit there and it's gonna perfectly hang on our door. Now to attach this little ribbon here, so whether we want it on this side or maybe on this side right here, I'm trying to decide, maybe I wanna have it all the way up here at the top. You guys let me know down below. I'll probably obviously figure this out before I see you guys, but let's put it here, okay? So we need one more zip tie to attach it, all right? So we're going to just kind of go around the ribbon and our wire. So we're gonna go ahead and just get this around, just like that. Pull tight once again. Trim off the excess here. All right. And just like that, we have a super perfect bow attached to our um, string here. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this out of our way to our wire, if you will. Now, once again, this is just a scrap piece of wire laying around our house. Now, my husband asked me, he's like, do you want me to strip the color off? And I was like, no, because we have, it was um, white, red, green, and so I just told him to leave it because St. Patrick's, so I thought it was super cute. But once again, if you were using floral wire, you could definitely use that twine and then just use that staple gun to attach it 
just like so. So how super cute is this? I really hope that you guys found this inspiring. So you guys can see by taking this file right here, you can see how small it was, but I made it my very own. I turned it into a door hanger. So um, lots of different things that you could do with these. You could throw this guy into your Cricut as well and at least cut out that outline and then color it in as well. So you could do that super thin, I believe balsa wood with your Cricut makers and things like that. Once again, I really hope that you guys found this inspiring. If you guys are going to recreate this, let me know down below. Let me know what you guys think and I will see you guys on the next one.